Now, it's been a tough few weekends for England cricket as the Australians took a 2 0 lead in the Ashes at Lords yesterday. And following a controversial move where Johnny Bester was stumped out by Australian wicketkeeper Alex Carey, good old English fans began booing and heckling the Aussie team as they broke for lunch. Three. <laughs> Nobody's ever seen anything like this. Three MCC club members have now been suspended for their behaviour. But is this fair or should fans be allowed to show outrage? The Aussie newspapers have not held back in their criticism of the Australian or England team. The West Australian published this a few hours ago with a photo of England batsman Ben Stokes. The subject says... Poms take whinging to new level with cheating drivel. Uh, that was quite good. Uh, joining me to discuss this is Australian SEN cricket commentator Adam Collins, who was at the match at Lords, and former England cricketer, talk sport commentator, and a man who'll get it right, Monty Panasar. Gentlemen, welcome. Head to head. Um, I guess we should start with you, um, Mr Collins. Um, in the spirit of cricket, the Aussies have shown themselves to be exactly what we've always known. Not the oh, highest that, calibre. Come on, my friend. That snobbish, prudish start from you, Jeremy. Why would I not expect anything like that? Look, the reality of the situation is, is that it's inside the laws of the game. The preamble uh, to the laws of the game, the spirit of cricket, which I'm sure you'll come to, uh, talks about playing hard and fair inside the laws, and that's exactly what Australia did. Um, I think it comes down to... This is quite a common mode of dismissal when you play in Australia. Monty would know that, and having played there a lot, that wicket keepers pinging the ball at the stumps happens routinely. And the fact that Bairstow, unfortunately, because it was a game that was bubbling up quite nicely and he would have added to the drama yesterday, I'm certain, after lunch, that he found himself, as you see on the clip here, walking out of his crease before the over was complete. I'm afraid to say that's just sloppy batsmanship. Australia were fully entitled to do what they were doing uh, and they, they, they saw an opportunity and there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. Um, Monty Patterson, I, I was actually um, looking uh, and talking to one of the crew earlier and what he was saying to me I thought made great sense. He said that Bairstow wasn't trying to achieve any advantage. He was just walking out of his crease. He'd sort of turned around and done his mark. Ben Stokes said later on in an interview that for him he wouldn't have wanted to win in that way. What's your response to all of this, Monty? Yeah, look, I think Ben Strokes is absolutely right. You know, he's a guy who wants to play cricket and win games the right way. And, you know, they, I think Australia are better than this. You know, they 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 could have probably, they probably would have still won the match getting, you know, Johnny Bairstow out in a normal fashion. But I just think that this is kind of like puts a sour taste in the whole sort of spirit of, you know, gamesmanship. But, you know, you can see how ruthless the Australians are. You know, they don't care at any given cost. They want to win this uh, ashes, and uh, I think the England team need to start getting a bit more ruthless and not be so friendly. You I know, mean, I remember I think, when I, I played, you know, with my first Ashes series, Ricky Ponting did not even speak to me for the whole Ashes <laughs> until they won five nil, and then he kind of sort of have a bit of a chit chat with me, and you know that I found that very intimidating. And that's what England need to do now. They need to stop this friendly conversation when the third Test match starts and start being a lot more ruthless. None of this declaration, you know, what we had in the first Test match, give Aussies any sniff. Once they've got their foot on the throat against the Australians at some point during the third test match, keep going. You know, do not let them get back in the game because this was completely outrageous, completely unethical, and it, and it was not needed in this game. Speaking for the great England cricket team, Adam, welcome. Uh, on a serious note, what this will do is going to spice up this test series. At 2 0 down, Stokes is saying we're going to win 3 2. You absolutely know, heading the Thursday onwards, it is going to be a febrile atmosphere and it's going to make for an extraordinary, extraordinary remainder of the summer. And what's interesting on our, on our sister station on Talk Sport that Monty works on, uh, I was speaking to one of the guys today and he was saying, people who never ring in about cricket, I mean, this has opened up a whole <laughs> new window, mate. We want to thrash the Aussies and that's good for cricket isn't it? It absolutely is I mean unfortunately cricket is not a majority sport in England. I wish it was, I've lived here for a long time, I wish that cricket was as big here as it, as it is in the country where I grew up in Australia and anything that can give it a surge like this has got to be a good thing You're right about Leeds, Jeremy there's already been reports in the papers this evening that added security for Headingley on the basis that 
Johnny Bairstow is the hometown boy. And on the Western Terrace, they might be agreed by his dismissal yesterday. So it's going to be fun in games. And England love winning at Headingley. Of course, the, the Stokes miracle in 2019, the both the miracle in 1981. And they've been winning there consistently in the last few years. So it's the perfect ground to move to next after this. Uh, just to bring you back in, Monty, those, those scenes of the MCC members who usually sit there in their ties being very sort of well-behaved and very quiet was extraordinary. And yet the shock about this being in cricket is so big this morning. This happens in football all the time. It was just extraordinary to see well-heeled gentlemen losing their whatever big time out of loyalty for their team. Did that shock you? Because I heard Andrew Strauss say he'd been there since he was 13. He couldn't believe what he was watching. Yeah, look, it was absolutely, you know, ridiculous behaviour from the MCC members, you know. Um, uh, the Queen is one of my heroes, you know. I pride myself on good behaviour, good etiquette manners, you know, the British, uh, you know, manners and etiquettes that, the, you know, the Queen has taught us. This was completely against that grain, you know. And the MCC tie is not known to behave like this. So, you know, the likes of Stephen Fry, the president of the MCC, he doesn't want to be in a position where he's trying to have a conversation. Should he suspend members? Should he ban them for life? You know, this was, uh, wasn't a nice scene at all. And uh, let's hope, you know, this doesn't happen again because Lords is the home of cricket. It is the place where everyone prides themselves all over the world coming to Lords. And, you know, we don't want to see this sort of behaviour from the MCC members. Um, I'm going to say this to you, uh, Monty, and I'm going to watch Adam's face. Is there a, a small bit of hypocrisy there? Because I saw a rather amazing thing from 12 months ago when Colin Granderholm, the all-rounder from New Zealand, was run out because he'd left his, his crease. And if I'm paid to try and be as balanced as possible, do you not think that if the English had got their foot on the throat of the Aussies with a chance to go 1-1, they'd have done exactly the same? Are you telling me they wouldn't? Are you telling me that Ben Stokes would have called that bloke back? I think Ben Stokes would have called that bloke back. And, and I don't think Ben Stokes would have even encouraged the, uh, you know, the run-out incident. You know, I don't think he's that type of cricketer. But one thing for sure, he knows that this is the style Australia will go for. This is how far they will go to win a game of cricket. That I think Ben Stokes' attitude, his whole, uh, you know, the team's demeanour is going to completely change. And uh, I think when the third uh, 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 test match starts, you know, it's going to be very much a much more a feisty con contest like Luton versus Watford or Arsenal versus Tottenham. We're going to I'm see not sure about the first analogy. I'm here. not sure no about the first analogy. Here. Monty, thank you very much. Adam, just to finish with you, it'll definitely spice this match up, right? I completely agree with Monty. I, what, KP was getting angry on, on Thursday. They're walking out together, they're laughing and joking. There'll be none of that now. We are going to play serious damn cricket. And you lot are heading for a 3-2 Ashes defeat. You know that, don't you, Collins? And you're going to come back on this show and swallow humble pie, yes or no? The beauty of what I do, I'm impartial in my job. Unlike you, you've got very strong agendas and I appreciate and respect that and what you do on this organisation. But all I am is an impartial reporter and journalist on the game. And I'll add that um, Johnny Besto tried to execute the very same dismissal earlier in the test match when he was wicket-keeping. So let's not forget that and keep the broader context in, in mind as well. But your, your bigger point there about having a, an extraordinary last three weeks of this series. I could not agree more. Um, bring it on. It's going to be a brilliant three weeks of cricket. And if it can be two all coming back to London at the Oval, we should be so lucky. Adam, thank you. Monty, thank you. Let's take it to the panel because Richard Tice invited Mike Graham and Kevin O'Sullivan to Lords on Friday, didn't invite me. You were there for this. What was it like? Well, I was there on Wednesday when we had the mad just-up oil things on Friday, and then yesterday. And I'll tell you what it was like. There were 20-plus thousand people steaming mad with absolute outrage and fury at the way that the Australian team had completely breached the spirit of the game. This is what Britain is made of. Yep. A sense of fair play, a sense of tradition, a sense of cricket. Is it cricket or it's just not cricket? And let me tell you, the MCC members did exactly the right thing. They showed just how far the Australians had way overreached themselves in the way that they reacted. I think that says it all, and the Aussies know they've gone way too far. Interesting. Ed, you were shaking your head. This is not the England I know and love. This is the post-Brexit England. Oh, There's Brexit's to blame now. Here we go. Poison, Poison. Poison. Because when we were in Europe, we behaved like decent English men. We oh, understood the rules God. of the game. God. Australia within the rules. No member of the MCC would have behaved like that before Brexit. It's all Brexit's fault. It's outrageous behaviour by members of the MCC sledging the Aussies. That is a hallowed place 
that they walked into to go for their lunch. They don't expect behaviour like this. Australia is part of the Commonwealth. We're meant to be closer to the Commonwealth after Brexit. Don't you want to win? Don't you want to do them completely? Australia. Yes, I want to win a fair way within the rules. But Just the Australians, to... they you, cheated. You had it absolutely right. Oh. You said that if Ben Stokes had had the chance to run out an Australian like that, would he have done it? Of course he would. No, he wouldn't. He said he would have called him back. But he we might, have done it in the past. Before, we have done it in the past. No, he would have he called him back. At that moment, in this critical ashes, no way. That's the right way to win, not, not the way the Australians. Can back I just bring Adam back in? I thought, the, the, I thought one of the most extraordinary things yesterday was when 20,000 people launched into the Aussies are cheating again, I'm bearing in mind <laughs> the old ball tampering thing. And when Steve Smith dropped that, look at Richard Tyson I giving it back. I was one of them. I was one of them. Were you? Went oh. horse shouting. Adam, hey, talk them down. Can you, can you, well, well, first of all, Monty, Monty freely admitted when he was on. He freely admitted the ball tampering himself when he was playing. So let's put that to one side. Who's your panellist over there? The MCC were right to barrack the Australians and confront them on the way up the stairs. Can, have some dignity about yourself. <laughs> West, <laughs> yeah, well, well, West, West. five-year-old men chanting, shoot, shoot, shoot. All this guy. Have some... Have some do you know what? Really, this is where's, the position we're in where the Australian is lecturing. I, I have to say, it, 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 it is slightly worrying. Yeah. Adam, don't the say this the wrong way. Adam, don't say this the wrong way, but it slightly concerns me <laughs> when we're being told how to behave by an Aussie. Uh, Adam, you you're a legend. <laughs> don't go anywhere. Rebecca, your thoughts on yesterday? I can't imagine anything worse than being surrounded by well heeled, braying, loud men. Can't think of anything worse. Can't but what are you doing here? Like. Can't imagine what it's like. <laughs> We're worse. just trying to recreate the yes. excitement of the Ashes. Did you watch Come the on. match? I missed it. You're not a cricket fan? No, but I wonder if you would all be so upset if we were having a better series. Interesting point from her there. She's basically saying you're bitching because we're losing. Maybe. Of course. Yeah. And do you think Headingley's going to be a damp squib? I suspect it might it's be. It's going to be better. What's that word? Febrile. What's the word? Febrile. Febrile. I hate you. It'll too. be a cauldron <laughs> of... Right, you two can get out. Rebecca's staying.